Today on PlayStation News, Astrobot and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth lead the Golden Joystick Awards. Astrobot has great sales results in the UK in September. Silent Hill 2 gets attacked by trolls online. Could a future Halo game appear on PlayStation? And more. Let's get to it. Hello friends, welcome back to PlayStation News. Hoping you are doing great. And we have a new round of PlayStation and gaming stories to talk about. So we start with the nominees for the first award show of the year in the UK's 42nd annual Golden Joystick Awards. Their Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and Astrobot are leading the pack with 5 nominations. So Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is up for Best Storytelling, Best Soundtrack, Console Game of the Year. They also have Cody Christian as Cloud Strife for Lead Performer and Brianna White as Aerith for Supporting Performer. Then Astrobot has Team Asobi up for Best Visual Design. Studio of the Year, Best Audio Design, Best Soundtrack, and Console Game of the Year as well. Next up is Helldivers 2 with 4 nominations and that includes Best Multiplayer, Studio of the Year with Arrowhead Studios, Console Game of the Year, and Best Game Trailer. The last of the most nominated games is Balacho with 3 nominations and that includes Best Indie Game, Best Audio Design, and PC Game of the Year. Other PlayStation Studios or PlayStation related games nominated are Destiny 2 The Final Shape and God of War Ragnarok Valhalla up for Best Game Expansion. But I, they are gonna have a hard time because they are against Bandai Namco and From Software Shadow of the Earth 3, so I don't think any of them win uh, Best Expansion. Besides Destiny 2 and God of War, there's also Death Stranding 2. And the Kojima game is up for Most Wanted Game and Best Trailer for the January trailer that was released at the State of Play, the 7 minute trailer that was released back then, and Ghost of Yote is also up for Most Wanted Game as well. Now I only went through the PlayStation related nominations but you can see all of the nominees with the link in the description. Voting for all of the categories is available right now until November 1st, and there were some fan favorites like Silent Hill 2 and Black Myth Wukong that didn't get many nominations but they were still recognized. For example, Black Myth Wukong was nominated for Best Visual Design and Silent Hill 2 got two nominations with Best Soundtrack and also Luke Roberts as James Sunderland in Best Lead Performer. Now both Silent Hill 2 and Black Myth Wukong alongside Astrobot, Final Fantasy 7 and all of the other games have a chance to be up for uh, Game of the Year overall. So the Ultimate Game of the Year category will be revealed on November 4 and voting opens on that day forward. The ceremony will be held on Central London and Livestream Govali on November 21st. So what do you think about these nominations? Let me know about that in the comments. Now talking a bit more about Astrobot, it did really great in the UK in September and we have the report thanks to GameIndustry.biz. Now Astrobot wasn't number one, to no surprise number one was EA Sports FC25. So the EA Soccer team did really good in September. But it still sold a little bit less than EA Sports FC24, 4.6% uh, less than last year. However, it sold more premium editions this year. After that, we have Saber Interactive's Space Marine 2 landing in second place. And that was enough to make the game uh, get the third best selling game of the year overall. And that's behind EA Sports FC25 and Helldivers 2. Ubisoft may be having some troubles as of late, but they got two games in the top five this month and that is The Crew 2 thanks to a massive one pound sale and Star Wars Outlaws at number 4. It may look good but it's actually trending behind Avatar's Frontiers of Pandora. At number 5 we had Astrobot and it did pretty good, in fact 24% more than Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart which is the previous Sony family friendly game. So yeah, it's doing really good and if you consider that it's also a new IP even if you have Astro's Playroom installed on like 60 million PS5s um, but like for a platformer not being named Mario, being at number 5 I think is pretty positive at least in the UK. Now rounding the top 10 was Hogwarts Legacy and Grand Theft Auto crashing from number 2 and number 1 from the previous month respectively. There was also NBA 2K25, Kingdom Come Deliverance which I believe there was a sale on Steam for that game. And also the Lane of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, the new Nintendo game uh, debuting at number 10. In related game sales, the PS5 is still comfortably the number one console in the UK. And that's despite all of the consoles going down 35%, not only PS5, but all consoles combined, PS5, Xbox Series, and Nintendo Switch. 
uh, compared to September last year. Now this time the, the digital PS5 was one of the great performers for Sony as it managed to, to register its second best month in the lifetime of the console after December 2023. So the PS5 was followed in second by the Xbox Series and third was the Nintendo Switch. There was a small switch, no pun intended, between the Xbox Series and Nintendo uh, compared to the previous month. Sony also did really good in terms of accessories and the Black DualSense was number one in terms of units moving the white dual sense to number two there was also the playstation portal remote player at number eight in terms of units but it's still number one in terms of revenue uh, because it's a 200 dollar accessory so i don't think it's gonna be thrown anytime soon and new to this list is the disk drive which was number 21 in terms of units but that was enough to make it number eight in terms of revenue and what game industry is is that it's probably because of the sales of the digital edition but it could be likely because of the announcement of the PS5 Pro. We saw a similar behavior after the, the PS5 Pro announcement on, on Amazon when the disk drive sold out. I'm not sure if it's people getting ready for the PS5 Pro or uh, sculptors trying to get all the inventory for the, for the disk drive before the PS5 Pro comes out so they can sell it at a higher margin. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that. Now, what do you think about the sales results for Astrobot and the PS5 in the month of September in the UK? We'll see the results of uh, the US, I think, by next week. So yeah, we'll see how Astrobot did in the US. But let me know what you think about that in the comments. Next, we have Silent Hill 2, which launched in early access over the weekend. And it's out today, with reviews saying that it's a polished and respectful remake. However, that didn't stop trolls from attacking the game online, as they went to Wikipedia and changed the reviews for the game, giving it like lower scores. Uh, that prompted Wikipedia to lock the page for the game but then they moved to other pages like Steam and Twitter to keep complaining about the game and it seems that right now the main complaint is the design for the clothes for Maria being censored and also the design for Angela who is being called ugly now to that several team members from the original Silent Hill also commented on Twitter to address this, the, this issue and we have original Silent Hill artist Masahiro Ito saying that People shouldn't take what's said on the internet at face value, but see it for themselves. And he also said that if these are adults, and I don't think they are, they should stop being disrespectful to the actors that play them. There was also director Masashi Tsuboyama replying to the controversy, saying that the games and the technology are constantly evolving, resulting in different constraints and levels of expression, which is a common issue in media arts. So yeah, I don't know what's going on. I think that you, you could have an opinion about the game and you may not like this remake. Uh, but again, going in, onto like Wikipedia pages to change the scores and all of that, it's, it's, it's a very childish behavior. There are 23 years between both games and they are being done by even by different teams. So again, you may not like the game, but I think doing all of this is a step too far. Now, regardless of all of the controversy, the original team is very happy with the results. Uh, Suboyama also talked on Twitter regarding the remake, including like a new camera. He said, and I quote, I think the value of the remake is that a new generation can play it. As a creator, I'm very happy about it. It's been 23 years. Even if you don't know the original, you can just enjoy the remake as it is. Whether it's good or bad, it doesn't affect the original. The thing to note is the change in camera perspective. The change in playable camera has a significant impact on many aspects, combat, level design, art creation, etc. While the impact on the story may be relatively small, it brings a big change to the play feel of the game. To be honest, I'm not satisfied with the playable camera from 23 years ago. Depth and angle were limited by the processing load. It was a continuous process of hard work that was not rewarded, but that was the limit. The over-the-shoulder view definitely adds to the sense of realism, in other words, it makes me want to try playing the even more immersive remake of Silent Hill 2. Now, do you agree with what he says? Are you playing Silent Hill 2? What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments. Moving on, could a future Halo game appear on PlayStation? Now, this is some Xbox news that happened over the weekend as part of the Halo World Championship. So we had developer 343 Industries changing its name to Halo Studios and they will be exploring Halo with Unreal Engine 5 and also working on several projects for the series but like whenever those projects are out could one of them appear on PlayStation? We have known about Microsoft's plans of bringing games to other platforms for a while now they brought Sea of Thieves to PS5 
they are bringing Indiana Jones next year and also the next Doom. So the reason we are talking about this is because this Unreal Engine 5 move was previously rumored by journalist Tom Warren from The Verge. And back then he also said that Microsoft was considering a remake for rival consoles. Now right now there's nothing certain, this is just more speculation and anything Halo is gonna take a while to develop. But it's an interesting thing to consider and some of these uh, leakers have been right in the past with uh, some games uh, coming to, the, to PS5. The last example being Indiana Jones, so who knows? These, ga these games are gonna take a while, as, as I said, the, like the main project is exploring Halo on Unreal Engine 5. And based on that, they will continue working on all of the other projects that they have for the series. But who knows, it's an interesting one to consider. Now, do you think Microsoft could bring its big franchise games like Halo to PlayStation? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Now, moving into some quick fire stories, we have had this rumor of Sony doing remasters for the original Greek God of War games. And now there's even more whispers of that. This is from insider Lunatic Ignus, and he, he sometimes gets some things right, but also some wrong, so take this with a grain of salt. Now, he said on his Discord that multiple God of War Greek era remasters are in the works, and that includes Chains of Olympus, Ghost of Sparta, and Ascension. Now, he also said that these games are in development by Nixes, and they would be announced by March 2025 for the 20th anniversary of the series. There was also a recent report that said that Nixus Software listed Horizon Zero Dawn Remaster as their first big PlayStation content project. And that wording says that if that's the first, it's probably, it probably means that more of these remasters are, are coming. And we know of Days Gone that is getting a remaster that was rumored before the state of play. But maybe they are also working on these remasters for the original God of War games. Next day Until Dawn movie wrap up filming over the weekend as it was shared by director David Sandberg on his Instagram. This movie is one of the reasons why Sony decided to make a remake for this game and Fire Sprite is rumored to be working on a sequel and there, there was even more rumors about it over the weekend after the game came out since there are two additional post credit scenes that appear, appear to hint that there will be more Until Dawn in the future. Now the bad news is the remake has not been received well by either critics or fans. There were some people on Steam pointing out that it has changes in lighting, atmosphere, it also has some crashes and bugs. Now in terms of reviews, it didn't improve the score of the original. Uh, it also did pretty bad in terms of, of launch sales or at least what we can um, determine from concurrent users. There were only 2.6 thousand players uh, at launch or during the launch weekend. Uh, that's the highest peak for the game and that is worse than Concord and Sackboy A Big Adventure so, so yeah, these latest two PC releases for PlayStation have not done that well uh, at least God of War Ragnarok got better numbers uh, it was a solid launch for God of War Ragnarok but it was below the original God of War or what the original God of War did in terms of, uh, peak, of peak concurrent players now we'll see what happens with Until Dawn in the future now that future may be full of Assassin's Creed games, as new rumors point out that Ubisoft is doubling down on the franchise. So the French publisher wants to release 10 Assassin's Creed games of various lengths over the next 5 years, and that includes Jade, uh, which is for mobile, Shadows, which was delayed to early 2025, Hexa, and also a remake for Black Flag. Now these rumors of a Black Flag remake have been around for a while now, but Insider Gaming got new documentation and details from a source recently and they say that Black, the Black Flag remake is codenamed Obsidian and is scheduled for a November 2025 release. This was before the delay for Assassin's Creed Shadows, so this date could change as well, so we'll see what happens with the Black Flag remake. Now we'll see if more Assassin's Creed games held the publisher as they have been in turbulent waters recently uh, with the stock uh, price going down since the beginning of September uh, but they recovered a little bit after the rumors last uh, by the end of last week of, of the Tencent buyout and now they have replied to BGC in, a, in an official statement that they regularly review strategic options so yeah, it could be that they get acquired by Tencent, but if that's not the case, we'll see if 10 Assassin's Creed games help them get out of all of these issues. Next, we have a mini roundup of Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, so the reviews are out and the game comes out on Friday. Now, reviewers said that the game is a highly enjoyable tribute to the series, 
And among the highlights, there's the combat emulating the Dragon Ball battles perfectly. There, there are lots of scenarios which are like love letters for fans. They also revamped the controls, modernizing what the Tenkaichi formula was. And of course, the visuals that make these, these battles pop and like the roster of 180 characters and also being uh, very accessible to newcomers. Now it also falls short on several things and that is the repetitive combat nature and that is because the combat is too simple. There's a weak AI that lacks challenge and depth for skilled players. There was also a poor implementation of the story mode and some feel like it lacked the charm of the original games. So as of recording the game has an 82 on Open Critic and Metacritic with 33 and 47 reviews respectively. So yeah, it's a solid release, so let me know if you guys are planning to play uh, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero this week in the comments below. Now, in another mini review roundup, the Game of the Year competition is getting tagged after Atlus's launch of Metaphor Refantatio. Reviewers said that it delivers an epic fantasy adventure, with the highlights being a fresh high fantasy setting that offers a hard feel adventure with powerful storytelling and memorable characters in a kingdom hopping journey. Now it also has a fun and refined turn-based combat complementing the cast. The visuals and the music are like icing on the cake for this game. Plus it also has some subtle references to Persona games, as it borrows from the series but it has some unique elements as well. However, some reviewers felt like it borrows too much from Persona and that led to the game lacking an identity. And there's also some story issues like a political drama that kinda hit or miss and takes away from a, what is a solid plot, plus there are some minor uh, like flaws in terms of pacing. Still, as of recording, it has 58 reviews on Open Critic with a 93 score, and with 31 reviews on Metacritic, it has a 94. So looking at the Open Critic 2024's Hall of Fame, it lands third behind uh, Astrobot and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth as one of the best scored games of 2024. So we'll see what happens with that uh, Game Award nominations. And it could be that these three games are the ones battling uh, when, when the Game Awards arrive on December. So yeah, let me know if you guys are looking forward to Metaphor this Friday and if you will be picking it up. So let me know about that in the comments. Now getting into the releases for this week, I also posted this on the community tab so you can go and check that out as well. But out today we have Silent Hill 2 coming out to PS5 and PC. It's exclusive on PS5 and console at least for a year. There's also Diablo 4 Vessel of Hatred that adds a new playable class, a new area, and other improvements uh, that are free uh, or are coming in a free update. And that's out for PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, and PC. There's Survival Fountain of Youth for PS5 and Xbox Series. LEGO Harry Potter is getting another remastered collection for PS5, Xbox Series, and PC today as well. And there's To the Moon for PS5 and Xbox Series. Now on Thursday, October 10, we have a Sky Ocean's Wings for Hire for PS5, Xbox Series, Nintendo Switch, and PC. The last time I saw you, for PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, Nintendo Switch, and PC. And Power Wash Simulator is getting a Shrek Special Pack DLC, and that is also coming to all of the platforms. Lastly, on Friday, October 11, we have Metaphor Refantatio coming to PS4, PS5, Xbox Series, and PC. Uh, the branding for the game is, uh, is tied with Xbox, but it's coming to both PlayStation platforms. There's Dragon Ball Sparking Zero on PS5, Xbox Series, and PC. Undisputed offering an authentic boxing game with uh, lots of licensed fighters coming to PS5, Xbox Series, and PC. There's also Starship Troopers Extermination, uh, giving some fight to Helldivers on PS5, Xbox Series, and PC. And if, we, if you remember, Helldivers is kind of inspired on, on Starship Troopers, so uh, the game is kind of like the same, but this one is first person instead. There's also Transformers Galactic Trials for PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Wingspan coming to PS4 and PS5. And Nick Jr. Party Adventure for all platforms as well. So let me know what you guys are picking up this week. And there you go, that's all the news that I have for you today. Let me know what you guys think about any of the stories that we talk about here, including the nominations for the Golden Joysticks. What do you think about Astrobot and PS5 sales doing really good in the UK? Uh, the whole issue with Silent Hill 2, this controversy and people being annoyed by the, the sign of these uh, two female characters and so far that they went to the Wikipedia pages to change the score of the game. 
Um, do you think that we could have a Halo game come to PS5 or PlayStation in the future? Do you think Microsoft will go that far in bringing their games to other platforms? Let me know about all of that in the comments below. And remember that you can find all of the sources for this news in the description as well. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing as it helps the channel a ton. And you can also find this as a podcast on Spotify. The link is also in the description. And with that, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one.